We are doing hyperbola. Ready, guys? Hyperbola. Look at the equation. Almost the same as Eblet. Almost. Well, there is. But with the ellipse, um, it didn't matter if you wrote the x or y first because with the ellipse there was a plus sign in between. But this matters because there's a minus sign in between. Uh, so, okay. yeah, now, so now we see the um, ellipse looks like this. Wow, well, just draw it. The ellipse, you know, it has like the points and then it goes like in, right? Right? That's what the ellipse looks like. Hyperbola has these same points, but then it goes away. So instead of going in, it goes away. That's what the minus sign does. Um, so the center is still HK, but you have to be careful because sometimes Y is going to be written in that first equation. Sometimes Y is put in that first equation. So if you're writing HK, you still have to put the X value first, then the Y value when you write your center. If you get your center wrong, get plus. Everything's wrong because everything goes up the center. So you got to make sure you just pay attention to the detail. Um, the the length of those axes doesn't determine which one is the major one anymore. It's not even called major anymore. The length, um, what's underneath, is not what determines it. It's whatever comes first. So this first example here where I have eight x first, that one would be the kind that opens horizontally. But if y comes first, that would be the kind that opens vertically. So it's whatever comes first determines which way this hyperbola opens, these two branches. The size of them doesn't matter. Because you could have a wider hyperbola or a skinny hyperbola, that doesn't matter. What matters is which one comes first to tell which way it opens. So the one that comes first, if I connect the two points, um, of those vertices, we have what's called the transverse axis. So that would be like the major axis like before, but it's now called transverse. And then there are two other vertices that we will use when we draw the um, hyperbola, you'll see in a moment. But what connects those is called the conjugate axis. There's no actual real vertices there, but we will need to find them. So we got the transverse, that's the main one, and then the conjugate axis is just the other one that doesn't really get called anything else. Um, we do have foci, and the foci are always on the inside of these curves, just like they were when it was an ellipse, or this time the curves go outside. The foci are still on the inside of the curves. So when they go outside, the foci are out here. And then eventually we'll have parabolas, and the parabolas have a focus too, which is inside. So it's always on the inside. And then um, we are going to have asymptotes with these, and you guys have done asymptotes before. Asymptotes are like like borderlines, where it's going to assist us wrapping the, the, the curves. It's going to get closer and closer and closer to the asymptote, but it will never cross through the asymptote. It'll just get closer to it. So we will have to find the equations of those asymptotes. So we'll start with number one. Number one is given to us not in the standard graphing form. Remember how to equal one. So what are we going to do? Divide by 36. That would be bad. So we'll have uh, x squared over, you guys have a line for your equation on your notes, x squared over 9 minus y squared over 4 equals 1. So we can tell our center is at what? 0, 0. So we'll graph that center. Everything goes off the center, so it's really important we have that center. Then the vertices, it matters what comes first. So you look at our equation. X is first. What's under X? 9. Plus minus, for I read it, I get plus minus 3. That is horizontal. So to my center, plus minus 3, it still goes to the X value because it's under the X value. Our vertices are at 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. Now, please draw those. Because they're not really for something, but we do need to use them for something, which I'm going to show you. But um, please make those vertices extra big. Because if you make those extra big, I, I think, I hope, it'll help you make less mistakes in the long run. Okay? But 
but try to make them extra big. So you used the three because it was the bigger and the square roots? Yeah, because it came first. Oh. It also was the bigger, but that's not why I used it. Okay. It's because it came first. Okay, so it's kind of different rules than, than the uh, ellipse. See, with the ellipse, um, the order won't really matter because it's plus. So if you switch the order, it's still plus. Okay. So with the ellipse, the size matters. But now the negative part matters. So whatever's positive is going to determine these vertices. So now I do have to find the other vertices that really aren't vertices. I do have to find that. So under the y, I start with that and I get plus minus 2. And I'm going to go plot those, but I'm not going to make them very obvious. Okay? You see the difference between the vertices and the not really vertices vertices? Question. Can you see there's a difference between those sizes? Well, make it obvious. And, and I use different colors, but if you were using just pencil. What you're going to use these new vertices for is you're going to make a rectangle, which we did yesterday. I told you we were going to do it today as well. You're going to make a rectangle that connects all of our vertices, that connects the real vertices with the ones that aren't really there. Those are used to make a rectangle. And then from that rectangle, we're going to make asymptotes. The, asym the asymptotes are, um, they go through the center, and they go through the corner of the rectangle. So from the center, I would go up to over 3, up to over 3, up to over 3, right? Yeah. And you have a straight edge. And the more accurate you make these, the easier it's going to be for you in the long run. So go ahead and use your straight edge to connect through this point. We'll be doing the same thing up here. That's not the color I wanted, but it's one. But there's two asymptotes. Goes through both corners and the center. <coughs> yeah, so you go down, or you go up to left three, you know, down to right. So I was just showing you the slope, because what we have to do is we have to find the equation of those asymptotes. So as I was using my straight edge and connecting them, I was already noticing what my slope is. So what is my slope? Well, one of them's two thirds. What's the other one? Oh, I didn't even do the close side. I'll come back and do the the other stuff in a moment. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, positive and negative two thirds for the equation of the asymptotes. That's the slope I'm going to be using. Okay, I will come back to the equation of the asymptotes in a moment. I was just making a mental note as I was making them. Now, both sides, there is a new equation. It's on um, in your notes, and it just says a squared plus b squared is c squared. So we're going to take the two denominators, the 9 and the 4, and add them. Where with ellipse, we subtracted them, so we're now going to add them. So we're just going to add uh, the 4 square root, square root 13, plus minus square root 13. And does that go horizontal or vertical for this one? It's going to go horizontal. It's going to go the same way the vertices go. So uh, square root of 13 is about 3 point, you know, I forgot. Three point six. That was it. So from the center, we will count out 1, 2, 3.6. Put my foci there. I made my job so big. In the okay. So the hyperbola branches go through the vertices. The foci will be inside them. And they will get closer and closer and closer to the asymptotes. So just be careful when you graph these that they're getting closer and closer and closer to the asymptotes. Don't pass through the asymptotes. They connect. Oh, it's not good. They connect with the... Uh, Vertices, not the foci. The foci should be on the inside. Just 
Uh, what's my equation for my for my foci uh, ordered pairs? It would be plus and minus root of 13. There we go. Okay, then finally we have to write the equation the asymptotes. These, the, these asymptotes are going to be really easy. Um, you have to find the slope and the y-intercepts, which I hope we can even look at the graph and find that. But if, if it's something where you could just look at the graph and find or you didn't want to just stare at the graph to figure it out, um, you would use point-slope formula. Point-slope formula, you use the slope and you use the point. The point you're always going to use is the point they all go through, the center. So zero, zero. And we would use point-slope formula that says y minus y1 equals slope multiplied by x minus x1. But there's two equations, so I would do that for the positive, and I would do that for the negative slope. But set the center at zero, so if I like distribute and you know simplify it, we're gonna get the positive two thirds x and negative two thirds x. Okay. All right, if you are working ahead, I want you to find the center and pause. You can figure out using a pencil, just in case you make mistakes. Now, if you found the center and the person next to you found the center, compare your answers. Well, I mean, I don't mean, know. Like, it does not change the, the K or the H. Like, you're going to get All right. So, remember I said, if you get the center wrong, you get everything else wrong. Everybody gets the center wrong. Same thing, but let's do it with the next one as well. Um, I just want to make sure we get through the complete star part before before the bell rings. Um, I do have that other one filled out and it will be posted online, but that, that was the only tricky part about that one was. Um, okay. Alright, so let's do number C. Letter C. You gotta complete the square. You start, I'll catch up to you. negative 4, this should be a minus 6y. So if you don't have a minus here, 
probably going to get the center wrong. If you get the center wrong, everything else is wrong. So just take your time when you're doing your complete the square. So you make sure you're factoring out that negative properly. So I'll continue this. Um, from here, you complete the square, and we get um, 1 and then 25 on the other side. 25. Yeah. Was not remembering from the other one. And then this would be 9, so we get negative 36 over here. You do need to put the negative. And then we have to set it equal to 1, so we have to divide everything by 100. My center would be at positive 1, positive 3. Then for the vertices, x comes first. So we plus minus 2, and then we add and subtract that to the x part of the center. So our vertices are at 3, 3, negative 1, 3. That's whatever comes first. It's whatever comes first. But I also have to plus minus that 25 or that 5. And I do need to scrap that so I can make my uh, rectangle. But those aren't real vertices, so I don't need to write them down. And once I make my rectangle, I'm going to use the corners and the center to find the slope and make the line. Whatever comes first, 
is is the vertices. You still have to do both of them, and we know to add it to the x's because it's under the x. Oh, yeah, yeah, the foci, that's going to be whatever comes first as well. Mm -hmm. So then we do our foci, we do, uh, we just add together 4 and 25 and square root that, which is square root 29, we're going to do plus minus. We're going to add it to the x's because that is um, the way that the uh, um, hyperbola is open. That's where our foci will be. So we'll have 1 plus square root 29 comma 3. And 1 minus square root 29 comma 3. And square root 29 on the calculator is about 5.4. So I will go from the center out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.4. And then we have our asymptotes. <coughs> so the asymptotes, we need the slope, which is a 5 and a 2. You just have to tell which number comes on top. Well, the y comes on top. So y is 5, x is 2, plus minus 5 half. The point we use is our center. Okay. We are going to do point slope 4. y minus 3 equals 5 half. x minus 1. And then y minus 3 equals negative 5 halves. x minus 1. Same equation, just 1 positive 5 halves, 1 negative 5 halves. Distribute the fraction. And then we're going to add 3 to both sides, but to add 3 to a fraction, it will have to be fractions, common denominators, get that. Get y equals 5 halves x plus 1 half. Down here, same thing. y minus 3 equals negative 5 halves x, and then that becomes plus 5 halves. Add 3, which is adding 6 halves. Y equals negative 5 halves x plus 11 halves. With as much work as you just did, you want to make sure that you're right. So I would encourage you to check B. Do you remember what B is and Y equals MX plus B? What is that one half? This is the y-intercept of the line. So I'm going to look at my first, or one of my asymptotes to see if it crosses the y-axis at a half. So if my purple line, does that appear to cross the y-axis at a half? Yeah. So a little check mark there. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then um, 11 halves is 5 and a half. So we go and we see, does this, oh, yep, yeah, it looks like it crosses right there at 5 and a half. Good. That looks about right. Just make sure that you're doing your asymptotes right and not making any mistakes. Okay? All right. Look at the next one. Start doing complete the square. I'll have this up for another moment for anybody who I went to you about for. Look at the next one. Start completing the square.
this is another one where we're factoring out a negative. So you got to be careful with your signs. divide by a negative number. Hmm? No. Negatives cancel. Negatives cancel, you change sign. When you divide by negative, that changes sign. So instead of having this positive in front of the x minus 2 squared, we now have a negative with the x's. Instead of having the negative with the y's, the y's are now going to be positive. So when I write my equation, I don't have a lot of space for like two more steps here. You guys probably have more space than I do. When I write my equation, I'm going to have to rearrange my term. I'm going to have to write, these are going to cancel out, and we're going to get a positive y plus 1 squared over 25. And then when I take 25 divided by negative 100, I'm going to get a minus 4. And then on top of x minus 2 squared equals 1. So because of the, the, the sign switch, the order of my x's and y's are going to be switched. Well, I like to keep it in that order with the subtraction sign in the middle so that I always remember whatever comes first is how it is. And so when I look at this right now, I know that it's going to open up the top. Okay? And then I think, before I write, where's my pen? Two negative one. I think before I write, the x part of the center has to come first. The vertices will be the plus minus five, but that's with the y. So I do that to the y of the center. So that's with the y. So we'll have two negative six and two four. Plus minus 2 is with the x. That's just those other dots that help you make your rectangle. And then remember, if you made your vertices pretty obvious and you made the other dots not as obvious, it'll be easier to remember which way it opens. This way it opens vertically because y came first. And then the foci have to go the same way that the branches went, so the foci are also going to go vertical.
finally, you're going to have the equations of the asymptotes. And then the asymptotes, you need to know the slope. So you're going to use your A and your B values. You're going to use how far you went out. Use 5 and 2. You just have to make sure you put the Y over the X. So you went up 5 over 2. Slope is going to be plus minus 5 half. The point is going to be our center, which was... Negative one. So y minus plus one equals five half x minus two. And y plus one equals negative five half x minus two. Distribute. And you're going to uh, subtract your 1. After you write the equation, make sure that you go and you look at your graph and you see that your x. I mean, your y-intercept makes sense with your equation that you have. I guess it says that I should have a y-intercept at negative 6 and I'm positive 4. And when I look at my graph, that's always right. Make sure it's the same right. All right, if you're done with that one, read the next one and start figuring it out. I'll catch up to you. The last examples are the ones where you work backwards. Yeah. Okay, that last, uh, the last three examples probably won't get through all of these, but um, they're just going to give you information and you have to fill out the stuff that you know and then uh, figure out the rest of it. Uh, vertices at negative 10, 3, you don't have to graph it, but I gave you some graphs if you would like to. So those are the vertices. And then the foci are at negative 12, 3 and 12, 3. So right now, looking at it, I know which way this hyperbola opens. Because the vertices are only go, they only go one, they only go one way. So it has to open horizontally. Also, the foci are inside of the vertices. It has to open this way. Where's the center? The center is at 0, 3. So what variable comes first? x. And the center at x is 0, so we just write x squared over some number minus y minus 3 squared over some number equals 1. So you just have to find those numbers now. Center. Mm -hmm. So the x comes first from the center to one side is 10. So what goes under x? 100. From the center to one of the foci is 12. That means our c squared value is 144. And we're using a squared plus b squared. We're adding the two denominators to give us 144. So 100 plus something is 144. What is this? 40. And then I'm, I'm not going to have time to do the other examples, but I will have those filled in if you want to open those on the notes. I'll pass out some graph paper. You'll need six graphs. Your assignment is easy.